sorry guys, just needed to start recording. Um, so I want to, to start talking about the different perspectives that we give into something depending on how we are feeling, right? So this chart is suggesting us to understand how the same thing can be described with different perspectives. It's a glass of water. The optimistic will say that this glass of water is half full. The pessimist will say that um, this is half empty. The realist will bring will just say that it's a, it's a glass of water and so on and so on. And everybody's right. Everybody's has everybody has exactly the same understanding, but they are describing things in a different way. And this is what happens with us when we are happy. We bring this gratitude. So thankfulness is the ultimate feeling across all the positive and all the optimistic view that we have of life. And this is kind of the divine will that we are. Actually, this is the will that we are invited to, to be in. But we have the divine will with divine feelings and we have the earthly wills, the will with the earthly emotions and all the passions that we have on ourselves. So when we think about gratitude, gratitude, it's, it not, um, it's not an emotion that comes along. It feeds and it's fed by divine emotions, by hope. Thank you, God, because COVID is really getting us into this transition uh, that the planet is going through. Courage, thank you, because I'm still being able to, to do my stuff. I am healthy, I have my family. Most of us have job, faith, strength, perseverance, discipline. So not always we use the word thank to be grateful. But most of the time, we can use all these defined emotions to carry what ultimately is going to be gratitude. And the other thing is, we are very used, we are very used to, to say thank you when we are pleased, right? So when we are not pleased with something, we just complain, which is right the opposite of that. So at the wheel of complain, again, it not comes along. It doesn't come along. It comes with angry, ah, this COVID sucks. We are here for more than 10 months now, and then we are still doing this. It comes with a lot of judgments. All the scientists, they are, they are stupid. They don't know what they are doing. They still don't have the vaccine or even envy, intolerance, selfishness, pride, criticism, and so on and so on. And when we are in the middle of this wheel, it's really hard for us to just get out of that because one thing pushes the other, one thing feeds, feeds the other. So what we are saying is sometimes it's difficult for us to be grateful about something because we are just at the wheel of intolerance. How can we move away from that? So then we can bring this divine emotions and divine sentiment. So then we can be serene for us to really be great, grateful about something. Oops. Kiki. Yes. Kiki, before you move forward, is that you on the beautiful picture? <laughs> yes. Oh my God. Are are you in India? Yes. <laughs> oh, so beautiful. Thank you for sharing this. You are right in the middle of all these beautiful emotions and feelings. Thank you. That's, that's, what, that's, that's what I try, right? Um, I think that, yeah, thank you. That, that, yeah, that's me. And um, when I was there, I was invited to feel all of this as we are invited to feel of all of this every single day, every single time, in every um, situation that we go through. But sometimes we, we cannot see ourselves in there. And it's difficult because serenity, it's not something that you, that you choose to feel, right? Sometimes you, you're just like so angry that you cannot feel, you, I mean, it's hard for you to balance your emotions towards that. So when we, when we understand what's going on in our life is exactly the reflection on what we have inside of us. We have the power to start changing things. And Emmanuel told to us, 
the mind stands as the mirror of life in no places. So whatever situation we are going through, it's been co-created between God and ourselves. There are only two people, only two people <laughs> that are responsible for the situation that we are going through. It's either God, therefore we should just be humble and understand that as a way for us to progress, or it is ourself. What are we doing for us to be into that situation? And then Emmanuel keeps going. Mental reflexes set the stage for the reaction of emotions. Look how important this is. I will read this again. Mental reflexes set the stage for the reaction of emotions. So what we are saying here is that, again, it is a choice for us to be in the, in the divine will or in the passion's will, because we can set our emotions. Emotionalism creates idea, ideas. Ideas determine attitudes and words that command our actions. From such manifestations emerge the threads generating the causes from which circumstances are born, thus bringing either destruction or liberation to our lives. So we are invited to think, how are we setting the stage for our emotions? So then we can have better control of what we feel and how we act and how we react. And I know it's hard, but that's exactly the reason why we are in this school of life, because we are invited to change the habits. Therefore, we can learn to transform our thoughts and our emotions into healthy moral habits. God wants us to progress, right? That's one of the biggest reasons why we are here. All of us ultimately want to be happy. Whatever happiness means to each one of us, and I know that happiness changes according to um, our evolution. Sometimes happiness means uh, to have family. Sometimes happiness means to support others, whatever happiness means to you. We are all willing to have the peace of mind. We want to um, be useful, but sometimes it gets hard. And what we do to ourselves is the perspective that we put into the situations that we go through sometimes just reinforces because of the vibration that we are putting into it. And not always we are aware of that because where we are, when we are in the middle of something, it's really hard for us to push ourselves out. And that is another beautiful invitation because the spirit says, human beings are often the architects of their own unhappiness. Doesn't it look like crazy? If they obey God's law, they spare themselves much sorrow and also secure all the happiness corresponding with the human condition. So th there is someone telling us that you have God. God doesn't want us to suffer. God wants us to progress, but we are stubborn. We are stubborn in our old habits. You know, when you say something like, oh, I've always been like that. How come I'm going to change right now? Well, yes. That's the reason why we are facing the situations that each one of us are facing. So then we can learn, we can exercise, and we are being invited to exercise all of that. Imagine if we could know which are God's laws. Guess what? We do. We do have Alan Kardec and a lot of helpers that wrote to us, coming from the spirits, all the laws, meaning we already have a guideline. But I know it's hard. So we are going to go over some of those laws. Um, and I did an exercise myself. I wanted to understand how we can apply those laws. Because sometimes, I mean, it's okay, we can understand the law, but what does it mean for us nowadays? So let's go over that. So the first law, the divine and natural law, is God's law. It alone ensures the happiness of human beings. 
it shows them what they should or should not do. And then they only suffer when they deviate from it. Look at this. <laughs> This is coming, all of this, of course, is coming from the Spirits book. And um, you have down there um, where, where this is coming from. And then Alan Kardec keeps, because, okay, God's law, but even, even these, uh, the divine law, it's too broad. So one of the questions that Alan Kardec says is, okay, so we have this, this guideline. Is there any role model that we can search for and try to understand like how, how to put those um, laws into action into practice and then they say yes jesus jesus is our role model jesus is the realization of the highest moral perfection that human beings may attain to on earth he was the purest being that has ever walked the face of earth so now we have not only the guidelines but we also have how to do that how to apply all of that and then I did an exercise, as I mentioned to you, and this is total uh, my interpretation on how those divine laws from the Spirit's book are explained by Jesus in the gospel. So the divine law, from my interpretation, Jesus brings, love God above all things and your neighbor as yourself. This is the whole of the law and the prophets. So if there is only one law, only one, out of all the, the, the 11 that we saw, only one, this is the one. Love God above all things and your neighbor as yourself. But I know it's hard. So let's see um, all the other laws because that's the intention. The intention is to narrow down and then to bring some more examples. So let's see. The law of worship by the Spirit's book. The law of worship is the elevation of thoughts towards the creator. The soul gets closer to God towards worship. And the way that we, we must understand that is really how to think in the God, like into God's direction. So again, if we are in, this, in, the, in, in the will of um, vicissitudes and passions, how we put ourselves out of that and start thinking with God's law. How, how do we tune ourselves into God? And this is what Jesus tells us, ask and you shall receive. Whatever you may ask for in prayer, believe, you will receive it. But it's not only pray, pray with humility. Examine your defects and do not your good qualities. And if you compare yourself with others, look for what might be evil in you. So again, he, he's bringing us to understand what is our role into whatever situation we are. When we connect our thoughts to God, it's not for us to point fingers on others. Even in God, God is bringing me this situation. No, it's on ourselves. Which are the strengths that I have to have for me to go into this situation? And then I bring some examples just for us to, to play around here. And I might not be able to go through all the examples, but let's see how it goes. I'm so good with my daughter-in-law and she's so evil to me. Why don't you, God, make my son see that she doesn't deserve me? What is the, which are the emotions that we are putting into this prayer? Selfishness, because it should be um, a good relationship with me. Prideful, because I believe she's not good for my son. Judgmental, she should not be there. My son should have um, something even better. So even though she's praying, there's a bunch of different emotions that are put into this prayer. What if we change, we flip that? God, help me to forgive and to be forgiven by, by, by my daughter-in-law. May our relationship be harmonized by your lessons and our knots be tied in nothing but love and forgiveness. Help me to see what can I do for it? So you see, it's kind of the same situation, but we are seeing one being humble, charitable, faithful, and there is a gratitude behind that. She's not saying thank you for me to have this daughter-in-law, but this it's almost implicit. 
by the divine emotions that she's bringing to that. So we are acknowledging that there is God co-creating the situation with us. And there is us playing the responsibility of what can I do for this situation to go better. There is a lot of labor. By the Spirit's book, civilization requires humankind to perform a greater amount of labor because it increases the sum of their needs and pleasures. But every sort of useful occupation is labor. So it's not only when we are paid for, but everything in addition that we do that might be useful. And then Jesus brings this perspective of help yourself and heaven will help you. The needs of the body are followed by the needs of the spirit. After physical nourishment, humans need spiritual nourishment. And it is thus that humans pass from the primitive to the civilized state. So Jesus brings to us how important it is for us to keep working and not only keep waiting for things to happen. Because this is important not only for our progress, but also for our neighbor's progress. And here is a situation where we might be, uh, we might see ourselves. Oh no, here comes this neighbor again. He's so old and can barely hear me. Besides, he's so chatty and then any greetings takes at least 30 minutes. And I'm so tired today. I'll just pretend I didn't see him. What's the kind of, of vibrations that we are bringing to the situations? Selfishness, victim's chair, laziness. See, it doesn't, it doesn't look like it is a, um, that we are harming something. We're just pretending that the person is not there, but look at the vibrations that we are putting into a situation. Then there is another way of seeing that, oh, here comes Mr. Neighbor. He might be in need of talk. God, give me the right words and the right feeling to make this conversation blessed and fruitful. We are being humble, charitable, faithful. And then again, we are being grateful without even saying thanks. We are just vibrating love. We are just vibrating divine um, emotions. Then there is the law of reproduction. By the Spirit's book, all beings must con contribute to, to help general progress move forward in every way possible. The act of assisting in this process of improvement is the way in which humanity can participate in carrying out divine plans. So we know that this is defined, right? But, it, but I also know that there are situations where um, you do not choose, this just happened. And this is the, the invitation that I would like to bring from Jesus' perspective is that the reproduction is not only for us to be grateful, for us to bring someone to life, but also for us to look back and be grateful for those who brought us to life. So honor your father and your mother. This does, does not only entail respecting them, but this is the least we can do. It also means assisting them in their need, providing for their rest in old age and surrounding them with the care they took, they took of us in our childhood. I know that not all of us had great experiences with our parents, but this time was not created by chance. This tie was created by a purpose, by a divine purpose. How come we can decide if we are going to give them love or not? Regardless, regardless of the other person's situation, the least that we can do is to give respect. And the best that we can do is to provide for them in their old age. And when I say provide, it's not only financially, of course, but also taking care as much as we can, because this is our duty regardless of the other's own behavior, we have to be careful with our own. Kiki, can I ask a quick question? Yes, yes sure, sure, please. Okay, it's about honor your father and your mother. And what would you say when parents or when, when father or when mother would not accept the help? I'm not talking only about financial help, but you know, there's some resistance for whatever reason. 
how can we best assist that father, that mother, when there is a resistance, there is a wall that has been built, other than prayers, right? That's something that we can always do for one. Um, yeah, I want to hear what would you suggest, please. Thank you. I think that you just said it. It's mentally. It's mentally. Because when someone is in a position where they are not accepting, it's because there are a lot of barriers on it, right? So it's not only um, a matter of being there physically for them or providing for them, like sending something, or it's really about creating this mental blocks or this mental afflict. Um, um, I forgot the name, but like this, this mental um, combat that happens. You know, one thing that um, helps a lot, and Tanya taught me that, have meetings with the person. Whenever you're going to pray, ask your mentor to invite the mentor of the mother of the, or the father, and then talk to the person. And it's not only one day or two days, it's every single day until the knot is untied. It doesn't mean that the other person is going to change their behavior, but who knows? You, you remember, um, I think that once we had this conversation about when we have this, this um, when people are connected and one of them is angry, there is something that is still enabling the other one to get that angriness. But when everything that you can give is love, it kind of gets loses. And then ang that angriness just staying there. And then this is what happens. The love gets loosened. And then you can either do this and then embrace the person. Or if it's not, you just go away and then the situation just go. And I think that this is, this is kind of, again, God co-creating with us. You do your part. Mm -hmm. You allow God to do his or her. Thank you, Kiki. If anyone else would like to um, chime in and contribute, please feel free to do so. We can come back to the later if needed. Thank you, Dri. And then there is this example. My mom doesn't like me. She treats me different from my brother. So if she loves him more, then stay with him. I don't hate her, but I don't have to endure this offense. The emotion that we are putting into this is disrespect, selfishness, victim's chair, pride. This is this is what we are vibrating. And then again, we are tightening the knot. But if we change that, I'm grateful for my mother for have bringing me to life. If she doesn't seem to care about me, I want to have the strength to give, to give her all the love and gratitude I have for this physical and certainly spiritual tie we have. May this journey be beneficial for our understanding and progress. God, grant me what I need so I can focus on my role without waiting anything in return, not even attention or recognition. Because sometimes that's what happens, right? We do something already knowing that the person is going to give us thanks. So what is the, again, what is the emotion that we are bringing to this? What is the vibration that we are putting into this situation? It helps to change the environment. Law of preservation. By the Spirit's books, regardless of intelligence, it is to give an all living creature. In some, it is pure mechanical, while in others, it is associated with reason. Life is necessary for the improvement of things. All living things feel it instinctively without understanding it. And it's interesting because sometimes we just get into our own bubbles, right? Uh, I don't feel like going there. I don't feel like doing this. It is our instinct. We are preserving ourselves from being uncomfortable. And this is exactly what Jesus invites us to do. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Kingdom of heavens before the humble and not for the proud. Most of the time is the reasons why we get into our bubble for us to preserve ourselves is because we are not humble enough for us to face whatever we have to face. 
but because we are really in need of like, okay, so for me to be in my life happy, I need to get comfortable with uh, this big house or this big friends and have parties and so on. Just be humble and just accept to whatever is going to you because you will carry this instinct within you. And here is an example. I'm so tired of this never ending working life. Besides, my clients are boss are dumb. They always want more for less. And I don't want how much I really deserve. That's why I'm always so stressed and tired. Again, what is the emotion that we are putting into all of this? Selfishness, victim's chair, envy, vanity. And we are offending our boss and our clients, right? But in the other hand, when we feel like we are, we are tired, Lord, Bless my bosses and my clients for the opportunity they give me to be useful. Help me to seek for our harmony so we can support business growth through our individual evolution. So what is the emotion that we are bringing to this without saying thank you? Humble, faith, charity. So again, this is our part when co-creating with the environment that we are. Law of destruction. The spirit says, everything must be destroyed so that it may be renewed. What you call destruction is only a transformation to renew and improve living beings. And it's interesting because most of the times we see destruction as a bad thing. We not, only, we not always understand destruction as an invitation for us to renew whatever was destroyed. And then Jesus brings this beautiful perspective. For, for verily, I say to you, if you had faith as a mustard seed, you would say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it would move, and nothing would be impossible for you. Why? Because most of the times we understand destruction as something bad. And Jesus is inviting us to see it as something good. Have faith. Keep the faith. Know that whatever is being destroyed, there is a purpose on that. But most of the time, it's hard for us. We just get angry. I can't believe my car was stolen again. I've been working so hard all these years, and now I have to start saving all over again, using this disgusting public transportation. God is making me struggle more than necessary. What is the emotion that we are putting into this situation? We are complaining. There's anger, disappointment, disbelief. Thank you, there were no victims in this robbery. God, help me to genuinely forgive. Help me to forgive the thieves and send them love and gratitude for being an instrument of your will. May I receive strength to save the money needed so I can purchase another car, if that's allowed. If not, please guide my thoughts so this money can be better used. Again, we are not thanking God, but we are being humble. We are having courage, mercy. We are being charitable. We are bringing all these divine emotions that are going to project into this situation. Such a better environment that we will be in peace, we will be serene. And again, this is our choice. This is our choice. The law of society. Certainly God made human beings to live in a society. God has given human beings a speech and the other faculties they need for a social life for a purpose. Human beings instinctively seek associations and all people are meant to help advance progress by helping one another. So it is important that we just expose ourselves to the society. It is important for the progress, not only for our individual progress, but also for the society overall, that we all keep evolving. So it is important that we expose ourselves to, um, to living with others. And then Jesus brings this beautiful perspective where blessed are the merciful for they themselves shall receive mercy. 
I do not tell you to forgive up to seven times, but up to 70 times, seven times. And why that? Because if living in society is a divine law, because we are going to help one another, we must learn to forgive. We must learn to be merciful. But this is how the society will live in harmony. And here is a, 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 an example. <clears throat> I'm sick of working with these dumb people. They are rude and stupid all the time. I don't deserve this type surrounding me. You know what? I'll just isolate myself here and I'll pretend I don't hear them so I can keep my inner peace. Put your earphones, hear your music, and do your work. And then after you're done, you just leave. Ooh, you're being selfish because you're just thinking about what we are receiving. We're not thinking about what we are giving. We are being prideful because we are judging people saying that one is stupid, that one is rude, that one is this, that one is that. What am I doing for this environment to be a better one? Lord, allow me to be an instrument of your will. Help me to keep my positive energy and attitudes towards other, regardless of what they are doing. I might be the light in the darkness. May I be surrounded by your love and protection and those who meet me or think of me can be touched by your love. See what a different energy we are putting into this situation. And then again, we are all in this ties, right? If we bring this selfishness and pride and offensive, we are just making that ties even uh even tight <laughs> but then it gets loosened when we love and then ultimately we are able to embrace them and even if we are not able to embrace them we are giving our love energy for the mentors and the benefactors to support that environment therefore you are being the light that jesus is looking for we can be the light that's the thing it's it's just a matter of looking at if we want to um, um, turn the light on or not, then there is the law of progress. And guys, I'm sorry, I'm just seeing that there is a typo. Everything is as number five. It's not, sorry. The state of nature is their original state. Humankind must, must always progress and cannot return to the state of infancy. You know that, right? Humans being develop themselves naturally. They do not progress at the same rate or in the same manner. This is why the most advanced help others move forward through social contact. So see how things they connect. Progress is a law and we must help each other. The one that is more advanced. If we think about ourselves just getting like, I'm, I'm not going to get in touch with this person because he or she is boring. I'm not going to get in touch with that person because he or she is no safe. No, this is exactly the opposite. And this is what Jesus brings to us. Not all those who say, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of, of heaven. Are, are his disciples those who spend their days in prayer, but who as a result are no better, more charitable or more indulgent towards their fellow beings? No. So it is not only about coming to, to BSH every Sunday. It is about doing something about that. It's about changing the habits. It's about allowing ourselves to go out of our comfort zone and do something about that and change and transform. I can't stand with this cousin. She's so jealous of everything I have and everything I do. She only talks to me when she's in need of something. I don't have to spend time with this boring one. What is the, what is the vibration? Selfish, pride, offensive. So then we are making that um, relationship even more boring, right? Oh, here comes this cousin. Let me be vigilant of how much I talk about myself and so little interest I have on her. Maybe we can start doing something together so we can entertain ourselves with something mutual to us. Maybe a new book. See, we just flip the way that we understand it and we are both progressing together. Jeez. 
law of equality. And um, I know that we've been, like, we've been discussing about a lot of different ways of equality and that there is this new terminology about equity. Um, and I humbly brought here equity because it, I, I don't know if equity is a new word, but, but it definitely when we read about the law of equality, this is, this is the meaning of that. The spirits say, all beings have the same goal and God's law are for everyone. You often say, the sun shines for everyone. And this expression reveals a truth that is much broader and general than you realize. And then Jesus, Jesus brings, blessed are the meek, for they shall possess the earth. Blessed are the peace-loving, for they shall be called children of God. So we are invited also for us to support the law of, of equality, of equity. And how do we do that? Mm, this Black Lives, Black Lives Matter movement is ridiculous. All lives matter. And there is no sense all these riots. It's not even that bad. I don't see it happening so often. You know what? I prefer to stay neutral on it. Or people will start judging me for saying that. They're being selfish, prideful, lazy. But instead, I don't understand much about this movement, Black Lives Matter. Although I'm totally against any type of racism, I don't agree with rioting. Let me better understand what does it mean and how can I support this cause. Let me understand how I can stand for the cause that all are one to God's eyes. See how we change that. See how we are, how we are vibrating to our environment. Guys, can you make sure that um, everybody's muted, please? I can feel like. Thank you. The law of freedom. All you need one another from the most powerful to the impoverished. Let me just mute someone here. There you go. Um, all of you need one another from the most powerful to the impoverished. Since human beings have freedom of thought, they also have freedom of action. Without free will, they would be nothing more than machines. Blessed are the pure of heart, for they shall see God. Verily I say to you, anyone who does not receive the kingdom of heaven life, of heaven, life, a child will not enter it. How important it is for us to understand the freedom that we have to manage our thoughts. I can't believe this client yelled at me in front of everybody. My boss was at the meeting and he didn't do anything to help me. Now the client is asking for that other dumb person to replace me. It's ridiculous. I can't tolerate such disrespect. But instead, we can decide to react in a different way. I will talk to my boss because the client shouldn't yell at anyone. I will pray for us to be in harmony and for the client to be surrounded by benevolent friends supporting her to rebalance her serenity according to God's will. And I will breathe and keep focusing on choosing my reactions. This is the freedom. This is the free will for us to decide how do we want to react. This is the same situation, but the way that the situations are going to evolve are completely different ones because of the vibration that we are putting into it, because of the energy that we are bringing to, um, to such um, a situation. And then the, the last law is the law of justice, love and charity. And there is a reason why it's not separated. There is a reason why justice is not alone because there is no justice without love. There is no love without justice, and charity is the biggest pillar of that. By the Spirit's book, justice is respect for the rights of each and every individual. The first is the right to live. The true meaning of the word charity, as used by Jesus, is benevolence for everyone. 
indulgence towards the imperfections of others, and forgiveness of offenses. Love and charity complement the law of justice. And then here we can see the Lady Justice. And I know that she's carrying the sword. And this is what we've learned, right? We've learned to fight for justice. We've learned to heal for justice. But I would like to humbly invite us to redesign the Lady of Justice. And then instead of sword, see hands to hands like this. Imagine all of us being justice with love and charity. And then Jesus brings to us, do unto men everything you would want them to do unto you, for such is the law and the prophets. And this is so simple. How come we just become judgmental for such simple and small things? That mother is awful. I can't believe how loud those kids are. They are so disobedient. But this is because she's not so strict with her children. My sons were always very quiet and obedient. They know who was in control. But if instead, let me check with her if I can give something to entertain the kids while we talk. May I be an instrument of love. Stop judging. Be charitable and humble. And then again, we are not saying thank you for me to see this. But we are putting all the divine emotions and we are being an instrument of love. We are being the light that God is looking for us. So if we know all these guidelines, if Jesus already told us how to implement them in our lives, what holds me to change my environment? What makes me complain or what makes me to be grateful. We just blind ourselves. We just do not want to change habits. We do not reflect when we stop and use our thinking and start acknowledging, understanding what's going on with our emotions, with our thoughts and what we are projecting. This is when we are going to be able to understand what is surrounding us. So how can I overcome it? First of all, be self-aware. And it's hard to be self-aware. So read more and more things that are going to wake you up. And hear uh, people talking about interesting things. Talk. Share what you're feeling. Do your nightly review. This is the moment that we are going to look back to what happened. And practice to turn your light on. The light is there. We all have the light inside of us. It's just a matter of going there and boop, turning that on. And then, my friends, to finish today, I just would like to share with you a very beautiful, very short um, video that helps us to see how important it is for us to turn our light on. <laughs>
of the world. And that's it, friends. <laughs> If it's hard to be grateful, then give reasons for someone to thank you. Thank you. Wow. I don't know if I can talk. This is very, very beautiful. I see this is in Portuguese, Kiki, this yes. video. Very nice. What a blessing. 